You're listening to the Colorado Culture and Cuisine Podcast. Today I'm enjoying some Sweet Bloom Cafe Roasters. They're located in Lakewood, Colorado. You guys can check their website out at sweetbloomcoffee.com. I don't get paid by these guys. I paid my own money. Enjoyed it. Went down to the location. It was pretty funny. I uh, was driving around and uh, I got completely turned around. And there are locations on a back side of a street. So there's like a main thoroughfare in Denver called Colfax. And their place is right behind some other places. And you could you could see it on the on, the, on Google Maps, whatever. So I ended up driving there and it was about nine miles from my house. And I drove, drove around and got completely turned around. And then uh, there was a random Denver cop. I was like, hey, dude, you know, where, where do I find this? You know, in my own police car, too. And uh, he's like, oh, just, you know, go down the corner. I get caught from there all the time. So turned around, went down the corner. Was just right there. It's really easy. So I went in 15 minutes to closing. Talked to the gentleman. The thing is, Caleb is uh, one of the baristas there. Um, and Andy's one of the owners. And I just got to shake his hand and, you know, talk to him about, you know, coffee real quick. And um, I was really impressed. You know, I told the barista, hey, I like coffee show me your coffee. And so I think I had an Ethiopia there. Um, it's either Ethiopia or Kenya. Um, it was amazing pour over. He knew exactly what he was doing, the craft that he knew and the ability for me to tell him, Hey, do what you want. Make me coffee. That's awesome. And he was able to do that. Um, the location's really cool. They've got, um, more of that whole commercial, um, business warehouse type of thing, but they're able to take the front part of it a little small part, make a tiny little cafe. There's maybe 20 seats in there, if that. Um, but then the rest of it is just the rest of the roastery. They're roasting at the time I was there. Um, they had all their orders stacked out. They're ready to ship everything out. And um, I thought it was interesting is, you know, they're focusing more on the commercial um, distribution side of things where they're, you know, brewing their co- or roasting their coffee and then selling it for commercial sales along with selling it online. And it's it's pretty cool. I, I'd never uh, really been to one like that. It was more like one of those breweries that uh, one of the kind of breweries that are more focused on the commercial side of things, or you know where you're just inside of the brewery and it's this commercial workspace kind of thing, which I was really impressed by. So it's it's less pretentious and more inviting in in one way. Um, although, you know, their hours are kind of off or from 7 a.m. until, until 1 p.m. So you have to be really determined to be there if you can't get there during work hours. Um, but also, you know, it's really cool. They're, they're doing stuff. Uh, they're doing pop-up um, coffee things at Sweet Bloom where they'll um, go to a, you know, a specific venue and say, hey, show up here and we'll be here with a, with a pie company called... Uh, uh, Long Long Eye Pie, I think, is the name of the the pie company in Denver. And you just show up, and they'll have coffee and pie and different stuff, and um, just they're doing different, uh, just a different way of business. Um, and I thought it was really cool too that you're able to see the beans out there. Um, and I saw some coffee imports, and so I was like, hey, this is the place that I want to be at. You know, if they know about coffee imports and their coffee that they have through their uh, green bean sourcing company, you know, I want to be involved in that. Um, and that kind of company that knows about solid coffee and uh, where you can find it, really. So today I'm enjoying the La Gabriela from Tarasu, Costa Rica, which they put the notes on there too. So it's the branding on the on the the bag is you know a black bag with a like a diamond, and then it tells you where it's from. It gives you the floral notes, so you know soft floral, apple crisp, and maple sugar. Let me press this down. Maybe you guys can get a little sound of this when I pour it in. So the color of the beans were more on the more on the darker side, but it was to the limit of what those beans could could pretty much do and the kind of color that you're gonna get out of it. Um, Wow, for a Costa Rica, this is really subtle. There's those those chocolate notes and you know, that whole apple apple crisp kind of maple 
maple sugar thing, but less of the chocolate from the terrazzos I'm really familiar with, and more on the the not current fruit, but uh, it has apple, you know, like dark, maybe uh, cooked apple uh, kind of taste to it. It's pretty interesting. I, I enjoy it. It's really good. It's just something I have pretty much every day. Costa Rica's fantastic, and the terrazzo area of uh, Costa Rica just has the best coffee I've ever, ever had. So on the back of their, their bag is, your beautiful cup of coffee begins here. We're a craft coffee roastery committed to expertly sourcing and roasting exceptional coffees. Every cup should give you a pause to enjoy its complexity, balance, and sweetness. Behind every cup are the producers that pour their lives into growing top quality coffee. Our heart is in the work is to work closely with these producers, connecting them in a meaningful ways to end with end customers. And this is really cool. So if you're like new to the coffee world and you don't really know what the hell you're doing, it says for best results, you know, use seven ounces or 207 milliliters of water for every two level teaspoons or 12 grams of whole bean coffee. Grind just before brewing, use spring or filtered water and store in this bag tightly rolled down. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty simple thing that um, that they're doing there, and what what's the simplicity of their their business model? Um, it's just a, it's really inviting, um, and it's less pretentious. You know, you can you can focus on this whole craft cocktail coffee bar thing like Corvus is doing, which is awesome. I can't wait to go there this week and after my homework, uh, go down there and enjoy some craft coffee, more like a craft brewery kind of place. What they're doing is they're really just focusing on specialty coffee, roasting it correctly, providing a place that you can go to and have your coffee real quick, or spend a little bit of time there, but not focused entirely on the, the whole hometown coffee house like common grounds is doing common grounds is directly in the neighborhood where sweet bloom is in the neighborhood but it's there's an industrial parkway that's there common grounds is directly inside of a neighborhood there's just houses around it and you know they're focused on the the whole getting as many people in there talking as opposed to providing specialty coffee which is fine those are the two different types of business models I'm, I'm finding here in Colorado and it's it's interesting um, if you guys want to try their coffee you can either get them to send it to you or you can go down to their location um, I'm actually going to use some of their coffee in some venison that I'm making so I went to Edwards Meats and I think they're in Arvada or Wheat Ridge something like that it's a meat market and uh it's a tenderizer run away. I'm going to use some, a uh, little bit of this La Terrazzo, La Gabriella coffee from Sweet Bloom, and hopefully make my venison taste better. Because you know what? In Colorado, this shit's awesome. I hope you guys are enjoying your week so far. If you have other coffee roasters, restaurants you want me to check out, or things I should learn about, or different coffee things, or culture stuff, let me know. This has been Colorado Culture and Cuisine. I'm Brad Blair. And please check out our Facebook page and become part of the conversation. Talk about food, coffee, culture, and all things Colorado. Peace.